Hello, I'm Charles Alcock and this is AIN TV. We're at the NBAA show in Orlando. Well, the latest flight activity data from Argus's track pack analysis tool shows a pretty clear trend of declining flight hours in both the charter and fractional ownership sectors. That's particularly this year and more specifically since a spike back in March 2012. So for instance, turboprops were the only Part 135 charter aircraft to show an increase in usage over the period October 2011 to September 2012. And in the fractional sector, small cabin jets posted back-to-back -back declines in both the October 2010 and September 2011 timeframe, and also between October 2011 and September 2012. So we quizzed fractional ownership leader NetJets, and the company insisted that it is bucking the trend. Well, on the whole, the year's been just great. Now, we uh, do see some bumps up and down from time to time, depending on what month we're talking about, but we've been really, really pleased with how the market's been performing. Similarly, Flight Options, another large fractional player that, like NetJets, also offers jet card charter options, also maintained that its business is holding up. Well, Charlie, I would tell you, at, at Flight Options, we're actually experiencing quite a bit of growth this year. Uh, my fractional business year over year through quarter three is up about 42%. My jet card business is up about 20%. So new people are coming in. I think that's reflective of some of the programs and the products that I'm offering. Flying activity, though, still, we'd like to see it higher. I'd like to have more people flying with us. For instance, my Labor Day business year over year was up 8% year over year. So that kind of gives you some metrics reflective of what we're seeing in the industry here at Flight Options. Well, I'm here at the Avinode booth at the NBAA show, and I've got some real experts around me to crunch these numbers together. First of all, I'm with Man Magnus Henriksen of Avinode. Magnus, you've given your own market forecast here at the show. It looked a little bearish to me. You, you don't seem quite as optimistic as you usually are. How do things look? Not as good as uh, we would hope. Uh, the forecast that we made yesterday looked at business jet activity on the US market and European market. In the US, we forecast basically a 0% growth next year, uh, or a slight decrease of 0.1%. Breaking it down on a regional level, you will see some regions doing well, like the West Coast up 1.3%, Southern US up 0.4%, uh, and then you have really poor performing regions like the Midwest that are all, we're forecasting a decrease in activity in almost 4%. Northeast down one2 uh, Europe is another story. Everyone knows about the Euro crisis. Uh, we've had a horrible year uh, across the board and business jet activity as well. And that is mainly driven by the southern parts of Europe where you have the Euro crisis countries like, uh, like Italy, Spain, Greece and these countries. And adding to that you have legislators in Italy uh, penalizing business aviation basically. So business jet traffic in Italy this year is all down 14% and being one of the most important countries for business aviation, it's, uh, it's brutalizing. So our forecast for Europe is that activity will continue to go down next year, an additional 3.2%. Uh, around 4% is Southern Europe and around 1% is Northern Europe. Right, so quite a mixed picture and there are external factors. Well, let's talk to some of our colleagues here about the particulars. Now, you singled out the west part of the United States and uh, luckily next to me is a lady who's from the west coast of the United States. Uh, Magnus says that um, insofar as there is an optimistic outlook, it's in your part of the world. Is that how it looks for you at Clay Lacey? I absolutely concur. Um, within our traditional managed fleet, we, we're see we have seen a growth in the past year of about 40%. And obviously, because we manage so many aircraft, it feeds some of our other departments, our maintenance and interior and some of the other offerings that we have. Right. So as you look into 2013, Varia, you've got uh, grounds for optimism. You feel that there could even be some expansion. Absolutely. We're, we have plans to bring on some additional aircraft first part of this year. So I do see growth. That's excellent. I'm glad to hear it. Now, Magnus also mentioned Europe. Let's go to a real European, um, albeit an Englishman. Paul, what's your perspective there in the European market? Uh, we hear that in the south uh, it's a bit dicey, but that's not true across the board, probably. No, I don't think it is. The, um, what we've found is that the ultra-long-range aeroplane that we operate is, uh, has been doing consistently well and continues to do so. Uh, it's the large cabin aeroplane, the, uh, the Airbus that we operate, which is a a very small part of the market, a very difficult one to predict. Uh, we've had a very good 2011, the early part of 2012 was good. We had a real dip um, around May, June, that, that kind of time. 
so um, I, pre I predict that for 2013 we, we may see a little more of what we had in 2012. So, you know, it's, it's going to be okay, but it's going to be harder work than it was in 2011. But you're getting That's, used to that these days, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's a, you know, we had a bit of a reality check there too, so it was good. Fair enough. Well, of course, on the other side of the world, the Far East, as it used to be called in Asia, in particular in China, uh, people have really big expectations. We've got Bjorn here. Uh, you're based in Hong Kong, is that right, Bjorn? Okay, well, how do things look to you? Is, is this excitement about China and, and the rest of Asia justified in your view? Well, Metrojet is based in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, we're uh, managing today a fleet of about 30 aircraft, and some are in the charter market. I believe there is an explosive, uh, chaotic gold rush on Asia. Everybody's looking at Asia and is expecting that this will be kind of the savior of the world. That is not the case. We have different challenges. Yes, of course, uh, we're growing. We're growing in two-digit numbers, but we're coming from a very, very low base. Uh, with the challenges we have, and that is uh, infrastructure, that is capacity, that is as well an uneducated market. I think there's great opportunity if you look at this market for the long term, but there's a lot of uh, groundwork which needs to be done in order for a successful charter business to fly successfully in Asia. That makes sense. Now, of course, uh, we're mainly talking here to operators, but uh, in the front lines also we have brokers uh, who are often the main interface between the operators and the customers. Now, David, you're in the broking sector. Um, what's your perspective? Booking aircraft is one thing, demand is one thing, but how is pricing holding up? Are you seeing any, any sort of stability there at all? Uh, we're seeing a bit of a re rebound in the U.S. with the pricing. I think, as Magnus pointed out uh, yesterday in his uh, analysis, the pricing's a little bit uh, still recovering over in the European side. Uh, in terms of our margins, as a broker, we do need to continue to fight for uh, our business. Um, margins are getting a bit thinner. I'd like to just point out, though, that with respect to what we do as a broker, we're focused primarily on charter. And charter uh, has actually been, I believe, one of the winners in this recession overall because what people look to in recessions are they have a flight to value and clearly charter is the most cost effective way to fly privately so overall we have a, a great opportunity to get our message out there that this is is really uh, the most sensible way to to employ private aviation in, in your business activities well that's excellent news so we started off here with a somewhat gloomy outlook but we've managed to cheer ourselves up a little bit i think uh, i think we've got measured optimism there and it does go to show that in the charter sector there's a genuine belief that this is the leading edge of the recovery that if we're going to look for new blood to come into the industry it's likely to come through these good people sitting alongside me i thank you very much for your time this is why we come to nbaa because you can uh, you can get the expertise at your fingertips Thank you very much for watching. This is AIN TV, and I'm Charles Alcock.